Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming, I'm Aaron. We're back with part two of our King of the Hill Assault Mech series. So, uh, last uh, we did the Banshee against the Highlander, and now, Tyler, this one's for you. It's finally here, the Atlas against the King Crab. So, again, thank you to our supporter and subscriber, Tyler, for this recommendation. Uh, I know you've been waiting for this one, so it's it's finally here. Um, now, we've been waiting to do this one because we wanted to get, you know, the comparison nailed down, and there were a few other big mechs in line in front of this one, but I'm excited that we did this in this order because, again, we just saw the Banshee against the Highlander. That was a really exciting matchup, um, and these two mechs, the King Crab and the Atlas, both commissioned by Alexander Kerensky himself in the lore. Um, you know, one designed to be just able to withstand withering firepower uh, and basically take on any mission and survive, right? The Atlas fabled and legendary for its skull face uh, and apparently able to take on an entire battalion of stingers, which <laughs> I gotta love the fluff. Uh, not really sure how bad the stinger pilots were, but such is life. Maybe they were only armed with machine guns, we're not sure. Uh, but the King Crab, on the other hand, designed to be just a mech slayer, being able to just pillage mechs in a single salvo, which uh, with those twin AC-20s, we know it can. So, um, these mechs, interestingly enough, very, you know, different, but also at the same time very similar, both with the AC-20 capability, um, both with LRMs, the Atlas obviously with a, with a host of other uh, medium lasers, SRMs, the King Crab just with that large laser. So which one is going to come out on top? I tell you, I really didn't know until I ran the numbers. I was very surprised to find out. So, are you ready? I know I am. Stay tuned, guys. It's coming right up. All right, let's get part two started. So who will be the king of the hill? So the Atlas AS7D, one of the most iconic battle mechs of all time, 100 tons, Battle value of 1897. That is not cheap in this Succession Wars era. Um, so this thing was produced in 2755. Again, we talked about this to the specifications of Alexander Kerensky. So really cool. This mech's got a, a storied past um, and persists. This variant persists all the way uh, from the Star League into the early Republic. Um, and beyond, perhaps. So this thing just lasts forever, um, centuries upon centuries. Um, very cool. And as we know, you know, this mech uh, gets a gets a sort of a facelift with the Atlas II. It, it has all sorts of refits, and I mean, this is a really cool mech. Um, and uh, you know, of course, the the lore makes this thing seem a lot scarier than it is, you know, on the tabletop. But this thing's still a serious machine to deal with. Um, so let's talk about it, shall we? So it's an assault mech. We all know that. Movement, 3.5, no jump capabilities. So it's slow, but, you know, I mean, for a 100-ton mech, it's not bad. Uh, it has 20 heat sinks, which, you know, doesn't seem like a whole lot, but uh, let's see how that ends up shaking out. All the equipment standards, so standard fusion engine, standard gyro, all that, all that stuff. Now, armor. Let's talk about armor. This thing, to the gills, 19 tons of armor, 304 little dots on your record sheet, uh, not including internal structures. So that mathematically uh, comes out to 99% armor coverage. I think 19.5 uh, tons is the most you could actually put on a mech, but then you end up wasting, uh, you know, I think most of that half ton increment anyway. So this is pretty much like maximum armor we're looking at here. Um, now the Atlas does have two meaty fists in case you decide to pummel smaller mechs. Um, and most of its, uh, you know, most of its weapons are spread out pretty well across the mech. Um, so it has notably the LRM-20 uh, in that left torso. And then that massive and meaty AC-20 on that hip-mounted 
right torso. Um, it's got a pair of mediums in the, in the CT facing rear. Uh, it's got a medium laser in each arm. Uh, and then it also has an SRM6 uh, on the hip as well in the left torso. Now, ammo wise, so this thing's packing five tons of ammo. It's got two tons for the LRM20 in the left torso. Uh, it's got a ton of SRM6 ammo also in the left torso, and then two tons of AC20 ammo in the right torso. So that is, that's the Atlas in a nutshell. So let's check out the King Crab. So the King Crab here, also 100 tons, has a battle value of 1810. So uh, still expensive, just slightly cheaper than the Atlas. Um, now this guy was built in 2815. So uh, later, um, well, actually, I'm, so so this particular variant was was uh, was delivered in 2815. So about a hundred years later than the Atlas, and that's because this is like the downgraded Succession War Errors junkie um, mech, not the super cool Ultra AC21 that I think originally was uh, was pumped out. So um, this is like the you know the downgraded version. Um, but again, the original design um, sort of commissioned by uh, Alexander Kerensky to just be the ultimate mech slayer. Um, so this thing, 3.5 on the movement, no jump capability. Jumping crab would be a scary thing, but alas, uh, we get no jumping, uh, <laughs> no jump capability here. Uh, this thing has 15 heat sinks. That's, that's abysmally low. Um, and, and I predict that's going to be uh, an Achilles heel for this mech, but we'll see. Um, armor factor is 272, so it has 17 tons of armor. That's 88.6% coverage. That's a ton of armor. Um, yes, we just saw the Atlas with 19 tons, but 17, 272 pips is a lot to eat through. Um, and if you look at the, uh, the armor diagram in the center there, um, it's pretty well distributed. Maybe a little less on the CT than I would like. Um, but overall, I think really strong. Now, uh, one fun fact about the crab, it does have hand actuators. Um, so the AC20s are split between the left torso, right torso, and the corresponding arms. So that means two things. Um, you know, one, they're a little easier to take out because you can get them in, in one of two locations. Um, but also, per the rules, you can't actually use your arms and pivot them out to shoot. Um, but you can, interestingly enough, pivot your arms out still to punch and grab things um, with those arms. So, kind of fun fact there. Large laser mounted in the right torso. Those things are all backed up by an LRM-15 in the left torso. So again, two gigantic AC-20s. These are devastating. 40-point alpha strike potential just from those two weapons, but they get real hot. Um, and so, you know, as we saw, the crab with only 15 heat sinks, we'll see how that shakes out. Now, on the ammo side, it's only got five shots per AC-20. So this is another Achilles heel for this mech. Um, has one ton in the right torso, one ton in the left torso. It also has an additional ton of ammo for that LRM-15. So not a whole lot of ammo on this mech. Not designed to be sort of, your, you know, your deep strike and leave it behind enemy lines type of mech at all. Um, but even in just a, a standard straight up game of Battletech, five rounds, not a whole lot. So you need to make sure you're hitting well, hitting uh, where you want to be hitting, and then you're going to be out of ammo. So I hope to God that, <laughs> that your target's dead. All right, so I'm excited to move on to the offensive analysis. Let's check out how those numbers shook out. All right, so here we are, offensive benchmarks, the AS7D versus the KGC0000. Uh, again, both these mechs are 100 tons. So when we look at this, what we're looking at, um, Atlas is on the left uh, or on the top, depending on how the charts are oriented. The King Crab always going to be on the right or on the bottom, again, depending on the orientation of those graphs and charts we're going to be looking at. We're going to start with the heat benchmark. Now, these mechs are very, very different in terms of how uh, they lay out damage um, and how they heat up just across the board, very different mechs. So really cool to see these guys side by side. So the Atlas. Both these mechs, um, you can see here, can, can deliver damage, right? They both have LRM-20s and LRM-15s, so 21 inches, they're capable of hitting hard. Atlas has a little bit more. Um, you know, when you get into that sort of, that, that mid-range for those LRMs, again, um, what you got now on the King Crab is that extra large laser that comes into play. 
Um, so it's still outpacing the Atlas in those deeper ranges, which is, is sort of counterintuitive because you think of the, ra the Crab as a point blank range type mech. Um, but as soon as it gets into nine inches and those AC-20s come into range, what you can see on the bottom is the heat on the King Crab just goes you know, straight up um, almost immediately, right? It's building up an absolute ton of heat. You've got eight from the large laser, um, you've got five from the LRM-15, and I believe you've got 14 coming out of those uh, two AC-20s. So that is just a ton of heat. Um, so again, this thing basically can hit the red line almost almost instantly once it's within nine inches. Um, the Atlas, on the other hand, uh, it has to struggle to build up heat. So it's very well managed. It can still build up a substantial amount of heat every turn, but it's gonna take it a while before it actually gets up to 30 points of heat. Um, you know, so one, two, three, four, five turns, you can see that climbing. Um, so that's really what it takes once it hits nine inches and it brings all of its weapons into play. Uh, and remember, we're only talking forward facing weapons. We don't count the rear facing ones when we do these benchmarks. So how does the, um, how's the white graph look? So the white graph is your baseline damage. Um, so what you can see there is, again, crab outpacing the Atlas up to about 10 inches. At nine inches, when the AC-20s come into play, the Atlas actually begins to outpace the crab, which is like, why is that? The crab just cannot sustain fire because of the amount of heat that all of those weapons build up. So you're really not gonna have a great opportunity to fire um, you know, both AC-20s or a large laser and LRM, and then it, you can't really mix and match. You're either firing two AC-20s or you're firing the LRM-15 and the large laser. And the way the damage optimizer works is it's looking at those AC-20s and it's saying, man, I'm at long range, I've only got five shots, like I'm not, not even gonna fire like, you know, those types of guns in, you know, uh, at this point, right? It's gonna wait until you get a little bit closer. So you can see once you get within six inches, you can see the damage really climbs there um, for the King Crab. But the Atlas also just delivering a staggering amount of damage. Why? Well, it also has an AC-20. It's got two medium lasers, it's got an SRM-6. So kind of interesting to see. I really was expecting a lot more out of the King Crab, but I, I didn't get it. All right, so let's talk about the optimized damage. Now we always say when there's heat, there's opportunity for damage. Um, again, with these big mechs, and we saw this in the last King of the Hill um, shootout between the Highlander and the Banshee, you you know, these mechs are basically running at the threshold. Um, you know, they're kind of designed with this large number of heat sinks and those heat sinks get saturated. So there's really not a lot of difference between your baseline damage um, and your optimized damage. Now the King Crab, we were able to eke out quite a bit at the end there, um, but the Atlas, not so much. You can see, you know, we worked an extra medium laser in here and there. You know, we were able to do a little bit more. Um, we built up a little bit of heat, but at the end of the day, the optimized damage did not go up um, that much. I think it was like four or five points, and we'll check that in a minute at the graph at the bottom. But the King Crab, you can see um, at that point blank range, right? When we're, when we're more thoughtful about how we're using our ammunition, um, you can deliver just a crushing series of turns between, you know, five, three, one inch, right? Those last three turns is doing an absolute disgusting amount of damage. Um, so beware, you know, it is outpacing the Atlas in those range brackets um, and actually closes the gap on the optimized side quite a bit. So check it out on the bottom, right? So baseline, the Atlas, at 188.2, um, the King Crab um, at 166.1. So um, what is that? 22 points of damage, basically, um, in terms of the difference between these two mechs. But then when we get to the optimized damage, the Atlas, able to pick up a few points of damage, so 192.9, so up from 188, right? Um, but the King Crab goes up almost 21 points of damage there, right? Um, so the King Crab's optimized damage is almost on par with the Atlas's baseline, but again, closes that gap within, you know, four or five points of damage, which is really incredible. Um, so again, if you're smart with how you use the King Crab, you're able to manage your heat really well, you can, you can do really well with this mech. If you're reckless with it, or you, you take, you know, wasted shots, you know, at nine inches with both your AC-20s, you're not going to get your return on investment for this mech, I can already tell you. Um, the red line ACD basically just shows us how heat sensitive the crab is. Again, um, the damage just absolutely tanks when you try to push this mech hard. Don't take on those gunnery penalties. 
Um, it's hard enough to land those AC20 shots, so the last thing you want to do is waste them when you're looking at a plus one or a plus two to your gunnery uh, from heat. All right, so lethality. <laughs> this was fun. So I feel bad for the javelin. Uh, so again, the way the lethality index works is we run these mechs up against the javelin. Javelin's running at full speed for its life, and these mechs just get to blow it out of the water uh, 10,000 times in a row. So we, we sort of harvest all this data and we generate these statistics. So the first thing is, let's start with the donut charts at the bottom. This was pretty cool. So these mechs were within um, almost a half a percent of each other. The Atlas killing uh, the Javelin 95.9%, King Crab at 96.5%. So again, these mechs very close. Even the head kills 82, or I'm sorry, 8.2 versus 8.4%. You can see these numbers are really, really close. Um, that sort of speaks volumes to, you know, again, their battle values are really close, um, you know, within 80 points or whatever. Um, you know, the, the kill ratios are really close. The optimized damage is very close. Let's go up to the top of the lethality index. So damage per hit, so the Atlas at 5.65. Yes, it has an AC20, but it also has a whole bunch of other stuff that only does five damage. You know, LRM clusters, which could actually do less than five. It's got a couple of medium lasers. It's got that SRM6 pulling the average down. The King Crab, on the other hand, it's got the LRM15, but it's got a large laser, and it's got two AC20s, so 9.05 average damage per hit. I think, I think that might be the highest we have seen yet uh, in any mech review. So again, just a tremendous amount of average damage per hit coming out of this mech. Um, so the, again, this mech really designed to take huge chunks uh, out of the opponent. Critical hits, as expected, can crab much lower than the Atlas because it only has four weapons. Uh, that LRM-15, yes, it has three salvos, three clusters, up, up to three clusters potentially, but the Atlas is bringing a lot more to bear. Again, it has that SRM-6, which are crit generating machines, so um, looking at 4.34 and 4, you know, 4.5, I, I think that's probably probably the average about what we'd see between 4 and 4.5. And so time to kill on these mechs was, um, was a little surprising to me. Uh, so 9.9 .9 and 10.1 respectively. So the King Crab I get because it's really just plinking it with an LRM-15 um, and that large laser, you know, uh, and then the AC-20s come into play. But by the time they come into play, you're already at 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, like turn seven or eight, right? Um, so an average of 10.1 kind of made sense to me. The Atlas, I guess I expected a little bit more, but then, you know, when I go back and look at the numbers, well, it's only got an LRM 20 to use until nine inches, right? And if we go back to the Banshee and the Highlander, which were both at about 9.5, 9.5, and a half, um, you know, again, they've got the AC-10s, the PPCs, they had a lot more coming into play earlier in the game. So um, this sort of made sense to me. Um, I think, you know, again, still pretty decent. That Javelin's very fast and hard to hit. That's sort of the intention um, behind this. Uh, but both of these mechs, again, just absolute slayers. Um, and that King Crab with that average damage per hit, just, you know, just terrifying. So uh, defense up next. Let's see how they shake out. Okay, so um, when we looked at, you know, the Highlander, I was super impressed uh, because it had like 3.5 seven maybe percent on the motive hits or something really low i was like wow that's really good uh and then the atlas has to of course show it up less than one percent uh motive hits again you're looking at a hundred percent on the legs basically you're looking at um you know packed out criticals this mech just impossible to bring down or slow down so remember that three five really going far for you um now you're only ever gonna, again, claim a plus two target mod. Um, that goes down to one pretty quick if you decide to even turn or look the other way. But, uh, you know, you get what you get, they're 100 ton mechs, right? The King Crab also really good, 4.2% of the time uh, it had uh, it had motive critical. So again, very low, but again, attributed to just this tremendous amount of armor um, that these mechs have on their legs, so very high. Now, uh, really excited to dive into the survivability. So the Atlas was only destroyed 7% of the time. That's incredible. It's the lowest we've ever seen on the channel, sort of to be expected uh, for the amount of armor on this mech, but also the critical placement uh, and the ammunition available, um, you know, really good. So this mech, again, we talked about it. Um, it does have five tons of ammo, I believe, on board but it has so many critical slots uh, packing out those side torsos um, that the probability to hit the ammo 
is actually almost identical to the probability to hit the ammo in the King Crab, which only has three tons of ammo, but it has far less criticals in those side slots. Um, so it was kind of interesting to see how that shook out. Um, but at the end of the day, ammo on the King Crab, 9.2%. Ammo hits on the Atlas, 2.7%. Um, again, the King Crab looking at less armor on those side torsos, um, you know, so that's a, that's a contributing factor there. Um, but otherwise, you know, these mechs both showing really strong defensive metrics. Um, cumulative survivability, so again, rescaled these charts down to 20% so you can kind of get a closer look at what's going on. The Atlas, um, you know, more likely to be cored out, you know, after nine turns of play. Uh, than, than getting destroyed by an ammo explosion. That means you need to work like extremely hard to kill this thing. Um, so it's just an absolute juggernaut on the battlefield. Um, the King Crab, also very tough, but you know, again, very susceptible to those ammo criticals. And it's, you know, it's kind of scary because as you get in closer, you need to retain that ammunition, right? The LRM ammo, yeah, you could, you could make the assertion that, hey, Aaron, you know, by, by turn eight, that ammo is gone. And you're probably right but you're still sitting on two tons, right? 10 shots of AC-20 ammo. Um, and so, you know, I, I would sort of counter by saying, yeah, you know, I mean, even cut that number in half, it's still more than the Atlas. Um, so it is what it is, right? Um, but it is, a, it is a definite risk factor for the King Crab. But at the end of the day, again, you're looking at 14.5% survivability against an awesome. That's pretty darn good. Um, but, you know, in a big heavy fight where this mech is most likely going to be the primary target when you place it down on the board, you got to protect it in order to get it in. Um, so that's sort of the advice I have for you there. Um, so let's check out the efficiency metrics. Again, the Atlas surviving 93% of the time. Uh, the King Crab surviving 85.6% of the time. So again, um, had something like 13.3% percent um, kills, right? So it's kind of where you're at there. And, and you know, it, it, uh, it doesn't sound like a big difference. Uh, and, and numerically, it's not. Um, but, you know, uh, when you kind of think about it, the Atlas survives twice as, twice as much, right? It's destroyed half, half as much, however you want to look at it, as the King Crab. So kind of interesting to think about. So when we look at the effectiveness benchmark, that's big because similar to the last King of the Hill analysis, so much of the damage of this King Crab is dealt at point blank range, right? And that's where that survivability curve starts to tank off. You know, you're gonna see a bigger hit on the effect of ACD. So if we go to the bottom, we look at those efficiency metrics there. We talked about the baseline. We talked about how close they got uh, on that optimized damage. When we get to the effective damage, it kind of pulls back apart again, right? Um, so you're at a 13 point deficit where you're only at like a five point um, deficit between the Atlas and the King Crab with the King Crab a little bit lower. Um, so how does it all shake out in terms of damage per battle value? Well, the Atlas scored very well, 7.02, but the King Crab not far behind, 6.94. So these mechs very evenly matched, uh, really exciting, I'm sorry, 6.84 going blind in my old age, but even still, you know, again, very evenly matched. Um, so it, it was it was cool to kind of see how this played out. So both of these mechs, excellent bang for your buck, right? We talked about this before, it's a bell curve. Most of the mechs that we see are, are in that five, you know, five is like the average. Um, and so both of these mechs very much above average and sort of in the upper echelon of, of mechs, I would say. The thing I would call out, is that, you know, again, the King Crab, 1810, the Atlas, 1897, the Atlas is a little bit more. Um, the King Crab relying on mostly short range firepower, but, you know, not to be discounted because, again, it can fire the LRM-15 in the large laser and deal a decent amount of damage at range as it closes. Um, but take a look at the gunnery score sensitivity. So again, whoever recommended that I put these on the same chart, I'd have to go back to my notes and figure it out. Great idea. Um, I think you recommended I scale them the same, which sort of spawned the idea of just dumping them on the same chart. But check out the slope of the lines and check out how they're different, right? And so what's really interesting to me is that at gunnery four, 
these mechs are basically the same efficiency score, right? 5.26 on the Atlas, a little higher than the, than the King Crab at 5.2. Even at Gunnery 3, very similar, 6.19 to 6.07. It's not until you get into higher gunnery that you start seeing more and more of a divergence, right? And that's because the Atlas has a much higher sensitivity to changes in gunnery. The King Crab really does not care. Um, because the King Crab's doing so much of its damage at close range, um, where those modifiers are going to be lower. And so, you know, if you look at the 2d6 probability curve, right, it's it's less of a factor. Um, and so it was just kind of interesting to see that. Um, and, and it was sort of, I don't know, when I look at the charts, you know, to me, um, I think what pops out at me is that the Atlas really relies on bringing more of its guns, like the AC-20, like the medium lasers, in play at 9 inches, because it has the ammo to afford wasted AC-20 shots, right? It can do it. It's got 10 rounds for one AC-20. The King Crab only has five rounds for two, right, for each gun. Um, so that was kind of interesting to see. So anyway, pretty interesting to think about. So if you're going to play these guys and you have, you know, the option, do you want to put a, a you know, better pilot in your Atlas, worse pilot in your King Crab? The King Crab is less sensitive to gunnery. So running a gunnery 4 or gunnery 3 pilot in the King Crab you know, it may not be a terrible idea. If it were me, I wouldn't put anything less than a gunnery three in a mech of this cost. The Atlas, though, you may want to look at doing a higher gunnery at gunnery two and things like that and playing it more in a midfield type role where you can capitalize on that damage without getting it too close. So kind of interesting to see those metrics. Um, but speaking of where to play the mech, let's get into the threat assessment and the roles. Let's review some numbers. Optimized ACD 192 on the Atlas, 187.4 on the King Crab. Time to kill 9.9, 10.1 respectively. Uh, survival rate 93%, 85.6%. Movement rate identical at 3.5. Redline heat was a big differentiator. Um, so 78 on the Atlas and 143 on the King Crab. We've seen worse, um, but 143 is pretty substantial. Um, and so, you know, that mech a little harder to control. Efficiency, very close, 7.02, 6.84. Uh, so these mechs were really kind of neck and neck here, um, you know, within 0.18 of each other. Um, and gunnery sensitivity, another big differentiator, the Atlas showing much more sensitivity to better gunnery. Um, so getting better return for those higher pilots where the King Crab actually pretty much on par with the Atlas at lower gunnery scores in terms of efficiency. So kind of interesting to see that. So overall, my ratings for these mechs, offensively, both mechs got a 4.5 out of 5. They both did a really good job. Lots of optimized damage there. Um, defensively, the Atlas gets a 5. The King Crab walks away with a 4.5. Still very good, um, but the Atlas just a little bit better. Um, probably one of the toughest mechs, again, that we've reviewed to date. Uh, mobility, both of these mechs, slow as turds, 1.0. Nothing to write home about there. Uh, control. Now, again, the Atlas scoring a 4 out of 5, which for a giant mech laden with LRM-20, AC-20, a bunch of other goodies, that's pretty darn good. Um, so 4 out of 5 is, is very solid. The mech is, is not only powerful and tough, it's very easy to use. So a uh, fantastic mech for, uh, for beginners, uh, you know, painting up their first assault lance, if you will. Um, and also, of course, veterans really able to take advantage of the mech as well. King Crab, not bad, three, you know, um, just be careful. Again, can't get a point blank and fire everything, or even that large laser and two AC-20s, you will overheat. And if you start stacking gunnery penalties, we saw, uh, you know, that mech just tanks in terms of damage. Uh, and efficiency, the Atlas scored a four, um, the King Crab scored a 3.5. So that's just the way the thresholds are set up. But honestly, uh, to me, these mechs are so close, it's almost it's almost negligible. Um, but, but the way the report card works, there are thresholds, and the King Crab was just, just below that threshold. So let's look at the threat. So we talked about this in the last one. Changed how we're calculating threat, um, and I really like the way it, it looks. Um, I think it gives a better, a better view of, of where these mechs perform. So the Atlas and the King Crab are both very evenly matched, you know, in that backfield. So everything pretty much up to nine inches, you're looking at very similar damage. The King Crab actually outperforms the Atlas and can do a little bit more damage uh, in that sort of 15 inch to 10 inch range when that large laser comes into play. 
So at the end of the day, I'm not saying the King Crab is a sniper mech by any means, but these mechs are pretty evenly matched. I'd probably give an edge to the King Crab for anything outside of nine inches. Once you get within nine inches, it's a totally different game. Um, interestingly enough, when you look at the Alpha Strike potential of these two mechs, it's not very different, right? Yes, the King Crab does have two AC-20s, but don't forget, you know, the Atlas has an AC-20 and an LRM-20 and two medium lasers and an SRM-6, right? Um, the King Crab's backing up his AC-20s, you know, with a large laser and an LRM-15. So Alpha Strike capabilities are very similar. Now, when you look at the average calculated damage, um, very, so that's the lighter red um, bar charts, you know, very similar again uh, across the board. You know, you can even see they sort of step up at the same increments. The Atlas is uh, a little bit higher again because that LRM20 um, able to eke out a little bit more and then capitalizing from the SRM6, which, which really is a nasty weapon um, when you look at the average damage on that, on that guy. Um, but again, you know, you can see they both kind of peter off as those LRMs get into minimum range. How does it look for threat? Well, the Atlas really can dish out um, a little bit more at any given range and suffer far less from a heat perspective. Um, again, this doesn't look at the rear medium lasers, so if you're thinking about firing everything forward and the two mediums back, these numbers are going to look a lot worse. Um, but at the end of the day, again, that, that Achilles heel on the King Crab is the heat generation. Um, so uh, really, the Atlas kind of able to deliver almost as much damage at point blank. Again, not taking the giant chunks out like the King Crab is. Clearly the King Crab is the, the king of lethal, but when we're looking at just raw damage output, um, you know, the Atlas is pretty much there and can do it for less heat. Um, you know, the other important thing to note about, you know, lethality, right, is that it is very boomer bust. The AC-20 is it's sort of like a hold your breath and roll type of weapon. And when you have two of them, with only five shots each. I mean, it's really like, you know, going to Vegas with a couple of bucks and hoping for the best. All right, so threat envelope, let's take a look here at the threat envelope. So again, I wanna start on the right side, the right little hexagon, that's the king crab. Don't forget, these things cannot shoot out of their side arcs because those AC-20s are mounted in the arms. Per, I think it's uh, tech, uh, the tech manual, uh, maybe it's in a, maybe it's in Total War, but I couldn't find it. But it's in the tech manual for sure. It says use the worst firing arc for weapons that are mounted across multiple locations. So you know these these AC twenties really are restrictive. You can only shoot forward with them. So that puts the King Crab at a little bit of a disadvantage, even in a city fight or a scrum or a brawl. So just something to keep in mind. Meanwhile, the Atlas doesn't have anything terrifying mounted on its arms, uh, but it does have a couple of medium lasers and two in the back. So you can try to bring some stuff to bear in, and cover those, uh, you know, those, those other arcs. The Atlas really with a 360 degree arc of fire or coverage, I should say. Um, both of these mechs, again, having pretty decent depth of fire. Um, the LRM-20 probably doing a little bit more damage again at those deeper ranges, but the large laser kind of picking things up um, once you cross that 15 inch threshold. So interesting to look at the threat envelopes there. On to combat roles. Uh, first and foremost, I think they're both just brilliant brawlers. Um, LRM aside, you can get these mechs in close and they're gonna mess things up real hard um, and in different ways and we kind of saw that in the benchmarks. The King Crab able to just be lethal, take out chunks of mechs. The Atlas able to, to just lay down a consistent withering hail of firepower. Um, so both of these mechs, again, really strong. Um, and I, you know, I would, I would take either of them in a city fight in a point blank brawl, take and hold type mission any day of the week. I think the, um, the Atlas also lends itself to a really strong, uh, frontline mech. Um, and that's because again, you have more ammo, you have more weapon options, you can modulate your heat better. It's not sort of an all or none type mech. You can really just sort of dig in and, um, and, and, you know, let loose in the midfield. I think its threat kind of shows that again, and that you, even when you're in that nine to six inch range, I mean, it's it's doing so well um, with its heat management and damage delivery, uh, really, really strong in that frontline role. The King Crab, on the other hand, I would not put in a frontline role. Um, and I, I guess when I think about it, I don't want that mech taking fire, like at all, ever. 
I want that mech protected and hidden and screened and able to get it in to just unleash those AC-20s. Right, so remember your frontline mech is really, you want to put it out, it's like your vanguard, you want it to take fire, you want to draw the enemy's attention to it. The Atlas is perfect for that 7% uh, destruction ratio, right? So 93% survivability. This thing is a tank. Um, and so the King Crab, even though it has high survivability, I do not want to take that risk on that mech. So I didn't put it in a frontline role. Uh, instead, I put it in the defender role. And, and here's why my rationale is this. Uh, if I'm playing a sort of like a seek and destroy type mission where they're coming at my objectives, um, you know, I have a base or fire base to protect, I mean, I want my king crab there. Um, because people are going to have to either take focus on the king crab and take it out before they get there, or have to deal with eating AC-20s and, and just coming into my sweet spot. Uh, meanwhile, I can fire an LRM-15 and a large laser. Uh, and I don't have to worry about building up any heat, I, you know, and in fact, I've, I played it like that, right? So if you look back on the campaign uh, when, when I had the King Crab and the Banshee, which was just a devastating combination, um, it was a slightly different variant, but the, the, I think the same premise applies. You know, it was just moving along with the escorts, and the enemy had to come to me, uh, and the mech really performed. Now, had I taken the AC-20 variant, I think it would have done even better in that particular mission. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, again, same principle sort of applies. So that's it. That's our King of the Hill analysis. Um, we looked at four mechs. We looked at the Highlander. We looked at the Banshee. We looked at the Atlas. We looked at the King Crab. So out of this pairing, which one is my favorite? Ugh, I don't know. I mean, the Atlas uh, is a little bit more efficient. You're getting a little bit more bang for buck out of the mech. Um, and I, I, I just, I don't know, the 19, almost 1900 BV is so much harder of a pill to digest than 1810. Um, I, I kind of want to go with the King Crab, and I think that I am going to go with the King Crab. I know it's got less efficiency and less survivability, but, you know, let's face it, um, if you can get those AC-20s in range of that Atlas, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. So I don't know. I think I'm going to pick the King Crab, but I'm waffling. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Um, and then overall, who's my overall winner? Is it the Highlander? Is it the Banshee? Is it the King Crab? Or is it the Atlas? Got to go with the Banshee. Love that mech. Um, in fact, it was the most efficient by quite a substantial margin. Um, but just the overall damage profile of the mech, um, you know, even, even with the, the insane heat buildup, I just love that twin PPC AC-10 combination that you can just let loose on. Um, it's just really, I think, really solid. So at the end of the day, uh, I really enjoyed uh, this comparison, but I've got to rank them. I think it's it's Banshee first. I think the Highlander's at the bottom of the stack. And again, you know, Atlas or King Crab, I don't know. Uh, I think I'm going to go with King Crab and then Atlas. So that's that's my ranking. Banshee, King Crab, Atlas, Highlander. What do you think? I want to hear it in the comments. Uh, so guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking through this. Um, hope you enjoyed this analysis. I really enjoyed doing this sort of this, this big uh, meaty King of the Hill uh, comparison shootout. It was pretty cool. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do give us a like, leave us a comment. Um, and guys, thanks so much for all your support. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more exciting stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming.